What's up guys and welcome to the virtual beer and paint party. We are going to be walking through an awesome painting today as well as six really, really badass beers. So get ready for it and without further ado, we have Avery coming up first. Hey folks, welcome to your Monday morning hangover. This is Andy Parker, barrel herder here at Avery Brewing Company. I'm taking a few minutes off of my work day to uh, talk to you about Lilikoi Capolo, the beer that we started canning a couple years ago. And the really, real question is, what is Lilikoi? Lilikoi is wine for passion fruit. And uh, I kind of stumbled on that fruit years and years ago at my first brewing job out in Hawaii. And at the time I thought that fruit beers had to be sweet and cloying and not good, but passion fruit's very tart tart and refreshing. And so, did a lot of experimentation and tried to take these beautiful passion fruits here, which you can see are about 98% seed. But as long as you're not putting seeds in the beer and you're actually getting all that tart goodness out of there, it can make something really, really good. So I'm here, drinking on a Monday morning, having a good time. I highly recommend that you do the same. Also, it makes a great beer milk. Try it. My name is Hannah and I work at Avery Brewing Company. I'm very happy to be here with you today to talk about Lilikoi Capolo. This is our uh, Belgian wit beer with passion fruit. Beautiful can, beautiful artwork. Let's pour it out. You see that beautiful haze on it? Oh yeah! Basically, this is my favorite year-round beer we brew. It's appropriate, in my opinion, for every season. It's very food-friendly. It's um, a nice 5.5% ABV, so for a lightweight like me, that's perfect. Um, like I said, this is a Belgian wit, so basically we brew the beer with um, the original Hoogarden yeast strain. And instead of adding the traditional orange peel and coriander that uh, wit beers are usually made with, we add over four pounds of passion fruit puree per barrel. Oh, it's... A beautiful beer because it's not artificial, it's not too sweet, it's tangy like Lilikoi should be, which I'm sure most of you know um, Lilikoi is passion fruit. Did I already say that? Yes. Um, and I think what makes it so palatable is that the base beer is so warm, so you don't get any or too much tanginess. I don't, I guess basically you don't have to like sour beer to like this beer. It's very well balanced. Um, and I think it's quite enjoyable. If you are on a quest to start enjoying sour beer, this is a great starter, if you will. Um, we don't use any wild 
yeast or bacteria to sour this beer. It is strictly passion fruit juice. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy its unique flavor profile. Um, thank you for participating in this tasting and incorporating Avery Lilikoy into your day. Okay guys, so if you have not already, you're gonna wanna crack open your box of art supplies. First things first, we have this wooden easel. You just pull the back part out and that gets you your formatting for it. Depending on how wide you want your painting to sit back or if you'd like it more upright, totally up to you. Next we have our eight by 10 canvas panel and you're gonna wanna use this like more textured side, not this back shiny glossy side because nothing's gonna stick to that very readily. So pop that up here. We're going in portrait mode for today. It's totally up to you if you wanna go horizontal. The sky is the limit for creativity. Next up, we have our paint brushes. We have a fatter, bluer brush here. And this is gonna be doing the majority of the work today, as well as a fine detailing brush. And this is our black brush. Um, you're also gonna want a paper towel or some kind of napkin to dab on in case you um, wanna kinda of dry off your brush a little bit, or if you wanna switch colors. Um, and then I also have a pencil, a Sharpie works, a pen works, really anything. Um, and then of course we have our paint pod strip that came in everybody's boxes with the six colors that we're utilizing today. So that's very important to have out. And then I have a nice little um, palette here. You're welcome to use a paper plate, um, just a regular dish, really anything. Um, and that's just to mix a little bit of our colors as well. And then, of course, we have our cup of water. Any kind of domestic beer also works if you don't happen to have water on hand. So that would be, you know, your Coors Light works, um, Keystone, Natty, any of those things would work if you don't have water on hand. And then, of course, um, our lovely inspiration for today, we are going to be painting this fine portrait. I know a lot of people might be worried about the hand portion that is in this painting, but don't worry, it's gonna take roughly maybe like four to five hours, but we're gonna nail it. All right guys, just kidding. We're not actually painting something that's gonna hang inside of the Louvre for hundreds of years. We are painting a photo called Love of My Life, or you can name yours whatever you'd like, but it is this lovely frosted beer mug that we've got going on here. So get ready for it. It's really only gonna take you know, 30 minutes to actually paint the paintings, maybe 45. And then of course, when we increment those beers in as well for some nice encouragement, it's gonna get us to that hour and a half time frame. All right guys, so now we are going to move into the very first stage of the painting, which is to draw the outside shape of the beer mug that we have here. This is an abstract painting, so you can go as big or as small as you want. You can get pretty creative with it. So for this particular one, I was about four fingers from the bottom. I'm gonna make my beer mug a bit bigger this time, just to change things up. And now I'm gonna be about three fingers from the bottom of the canvas here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw just a rectangle. It does not have to be perfect by any means. And this is all gonna get covered up with paint eventually, so no worries there. And then we have to build our horizon line, which is what the beer mug is going to be sitting on. That is our table. And then we, of course, need to add in our handle as well. So on my original demo piece, I was kind of inspired by the um, the Stein shape that you see you know, at Oktoberfest. So, um, since it's September and we're moving into October, I'm gonna keep that same shape. You can make it more of like a C shape if you want, like a traditional beer, or you can make it curly, whatever you really want, but. That is going to be my outer shape. And then you wanna make the inside shape as well. A little cheat here is that it's basically the letter C backwards, so. There you go, you have the entire outline of your paint portrait ready to go. We just need to add some acrylic paint, but first, I'm thirsty, so let's grab a beer. Hey everybody, this is Scott from Dust Bowl Brewing Company. Uh, for those of you not too familiar with Dust Bowl, we're located in the Central Valley in California, Turlock, California to be exact. Been around since 2009. I'm here today to talk to you about our newest year-round IPA, Tomorrow's Clear. Uh, it's a West Coast style IPA. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the West Coast style myself. 
big fan of craft beer like everybody, but when it comes to the West Coast style IPAs, nothing can beat it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it here. We've got Simcoe, Citra, Galaxy, Cashmere hops, Vermont Ale Yeast. Uh, we find that Vermont Ale Yeast with a lot of the hops we use really brings out a nice kind of tropical, fruity, estuary profile. Get that passion fruit, pineapple, a little bit of lemon in there. Oh yeah, we've got some flaked oats in there as well. Really helps kind of boost the body a little bit, round out that back end so that you get that bitter finish without it kind of eviscerating the back end of your palate. Um, again, sitting out in our beer garden. It's a gorgeous day, the smoke's cleared out. Hope everybody is safe, healthy. Hope your families are safe and healthy. Hope you're all getting to enjoy a really good beer today. I know things are a little crazy right now, but remember, today's hazy, but tomorrow's gonna be clear. Okay guys, so we are officially ready to start the background of the painting now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that fatter bluer brush that I told you about earlier. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get it a little bit damp in our water cup. And we're gonna go ahead and start by grabbing that blue color. For me, on this particular painting, I went with more of a navy. Um, and you can do that by taking your blue color and adding a smidgen of black to it if you'd like to. Otherwise, feel free to get creative here too. You can also make the background green or any color you really want, but I'm gonna stick with this traditional blue color here. And we're gonna start here at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up through the painting. So what I'm going to do is just use back long strokes between the painting. I'm going horizontally here. And then what I'm gonna do is as I work my way up, and as the color runs out of the brush, I'm gonna create kind of an ombre effect so it's not quite as one dimensional, not just all flat blue color. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that table piece at the very bottom and just work your way up with those long back and forth strokes and fill that in. Okay, now that we have that bottom portion kind of completed, I'm still trying to create that bit of an ombre effect. So it's not quite as dark at the bottom as it is at the top here at the base of the table. Um, <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rinse off our brush a little bit. And I like to give it a little bit of a dab on the paper towel to kind of get some of that excess color off. You don't want any color bleeding. Um, and I'm gonna take a smidgen of the black and I'm just gonna kind of run a line mainly across the back of that table here. Nothing too crazy, but enough to define that space like we did on this painting over here where you can kind of see uh, the differentiator between the table and then the actual background behind the beer. So now I'm gonna clean off that black. And staying with that same fat blue brush, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into my blue color and I'm gonna work my way up the rest of the painting dodging the areas where you have that mug outline. And then also keep in mind that we're gonna be adding a little bit of white foam here at the top. So depending on how much foam you want on your beer, you're gonna to wanna to kind of avoid just a little bit of space up here too. So here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and take that blue color, fill it in in that same back and forth motion. I'm 
Now what I'm doing right here is I think it's a little bit easier to get kind of a controlled line by going straight down along that beer mug, but you don't really have to do that. It's totally up to you. That just helps me kind of fill it in more efficiently. Once again, I'm going to kind of dodge just a little bit of a dome area here, and I keep filling in. I like to use those really long strokes when you have more of that canvas area to fill in so you have it less choppy um, like we had on the sides here. So you kind of go back and elongate those strokes so you see less of that going on. But ultimately we're going to be adding some texture as you can see in the back. So it's not super essential to be perfect. And even here I got a little bit into my foam line but that gets covered up anyway so no worries there. And now we're going to go ahead and make sure you fill in this little D shape here inside of that handle as well. You don't want to forget about that part. And like I said, when you try to kind of trace the shape of the letter, it makes it a little bit easier to control the brush. And then you can fill in with that sideways stroke like so. Perfect. All right, so for the most part, that is the completion of our actual base layer of that background. And you can see it's kind of taking its time to dry a little bit, so we're gonna go ahead and give that some time before we add in our little white dabs. Take that jump, no way. don't feel the fall. Yeah, no way. There's no way. 
no way. Open the water no way. rises. You built a wall. No way. I moved to San Diego to be involved with the beer scene down here. I was heavily influenced by what was going on in San Diego. It really made me get excited about quality and excited about making the best beer possible. What goes on in Baja and what goes on in Mexico has really kind of inspired me and just a new way of thought. When I, when I talk to the brewers down there and see how inspired they are, it makes me excited. It makes me want to try new things, new ingredients. I wanted to do something very different, but something that was authentic to me. My inspiration for South Norte is to bring the best of both worlds, the best of both cultures, and infuse them with tons of new flavors and exciting styles. Brooks. I'm the brewmaster at South Norte Beer Company and today we're going to be talking about Agavamente. This is a very beautiful beer. It's uh, been very successful for us. We've won uh, multiple awards for this beer. It's a beautiful color. Uh, it starts off as a stronger lager. It's semi-sweet with very low hopping. And in order to balance out this beer we uh, create the, the bitterness with the high amounts of hibiscus in this beer. The agave also kicks up the alcohol and leads to a nice refreshing dry finish. Clocks in at 6.3 ABV. Very easy drinking, perfect for the summertime. So I hope you all check it out soon and pick up a six pack. Beautiful. Okay guys, so we are moving on to the next portion of the painting. Luckily I've got my South Norte here as well to help me along the way. Mm. So what we are going to be doing next is we are going to go towards our white. Still with that fatter brush, we're still using this blue brush. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take some dabs of white. And we're going to do a move that I call the Nike swoosh. All throughout the background of the painting to kind of give it the same texture that you saw into that display photo. So you just do these little swooshes all over the background, grabbing more white paint as you go. And these are all going to be nicely blended in eventually. But this is the motion that we are going for here, that Nike swoosh pattern. Yeah. And now what you do is you just keep repeating that pattern shape, adding that texture to the background and just letting the brush kind of move around and blend in that shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and concentrate up in this upper corner here so you can kind of see what it will eventually look like. And what we're trying to do here is just really differentiate this background from what you see at the bottom of the painting down towards where the table is. So you can kind of see how it's a bit more textured here as opposed to the straight across that we had down initially onto that table. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do that same motion here, those Nike swooshes, and just blend it all in. All throughout your painting.
And then you can see over here, it's starting to dry up a little bit more. And I like to keep that same kind of blended pattern that I have. So what you can do is you can grab a smidgen of water, just dip your brush in, and then kind of dry it off on the paper towel a little bit. And that will give you a little bit of that moisture back into the canvas to be able to really blend and move that around without having to add in too much more color. And if you happen to add in too much white in a certain area, or you don't like how blue it still is, you can just easily grab a bit more of that color. And I kind of dab it on the side of the palette here, or you can dab it on your paper towel, and then you can kind of insert more of that color back in if you think that you have too much of a pocket of blue or too much of a pocket of white. So go ahead and massage that in all around the canvas, make sure it's beautifully blended for your background. If you decided to get creative and you went with a different color other than blue for your background, that's totally fine too. You can still utilize whatever color you'd like to speckle. I recommend that white color. Or if you went with a gray background, you could use the same kind of white to blend it in and make it more of a spotted gray. Or if you went with green, same kind of deal. You could really use any accent color you'd like here. If you did make a green background, you could use white speckles, for example. So now to me, that's looking a lot more blended. And I'm liking the texture that we have going on here. So I think we deserve another beer break. So up next, we've got Iron Fire. Get ready for it. I thought I told you to stay away from my brewery, boy. They're hogging all the hops. Your hops are too strong! Arm fire. Hi guys, uh, welcome to Iron Fire Brewery. Uh, my name's Mike, I'm the sales guy for territorial sales uh, around the area. I cover Riverside and San Bernardino County. Uh, Iron Fire's been around for eight years and basically our, where, where our brewery came from were basically John and Greg. Uh, they both came from Ballas Point and basically they just had an idea to say, hey, you know what, we're good at a... <laughs> making beer and stuff like that. So they just said, why not give it a shot? And ever since then, uh, it's kind of been a hit. So we're located in Temecula, California. And this is the beer uh, on the tasting, virtual tasting. Uh, it has Calypso and lemon drop hops. Uh, the Calypso kind of gives it more of that bitterness. Uh, and then the lemon drop kind of has a fruitiness to it. Uh, the beer was inspired by our brewmaster, John Mano. Uh, he liked shandies and basically this came about a little bit before summer. He said, why not make our own shandy, put a little twist with the iron fire in it. And uh, so let's give this sucker a try. Let's pop it open. Ah, smells great. Nice lemon profile, a little sweet. Let's give it a taste here. Definitely gives you some of that sweetness. A little acidic to kind of balance it out, but definitely goes down smooth, especially during the summer. So if you guys like just a nice, easy drinking lemonade with a little bit of a twist, 
go for the Iron Fire beer. Hey guys, just want to let you guys know, this is Mike from Iron Fire Brewery. You guys can light up the chat right here. We're giving away a hat, a bumper sticker. Just tell us your guys' favorite beer, one of your favorite Iron Fire beers, okay? Have a good one, cheers. Okay guys, welcome back to the painting portion of today. Hopefully you guys have a really solid buzz going on by now. I know I do, that Iron Fire is one of my favorites. So, up next we have to go ahead and wash off our brush, get rid of all of that blue color that we had going on from that background because we are moving on to the actual beer. So you wanna really make sure that brush is clean. You don't want any kind of color bleeding going on because that is going to ruin the lovely oranges and yellows and golds that we have in that center piece of the painting. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is in order to get this kind of darker shape here, you're going to want to grab some of your orange and this is where I'm going to be mixing a bit more. Let's see if I can tilt this a bit for you guys, but I'm grabbing a bit of this orange, I'm plopping it over into this area here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bit of brown. So it's going to give me more of a golden color here. And this is going to be that heavier shape that you kind of see on that left hand side of the beer mug. We don't want it to really be that stark of kind of that pumpkin orange that you have. Um, but that is why we blend colors. So once you get that color blended, what you're going to do, and for me it's can see up here this is kind of the tone that we're going for you don't need a ton of it too but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a Z shape within the beer mug so you're going to go from here down to here and then along the bottom so what we're going to do is that kind of a line here and then we're going to zip down here down towards the bottom of the mug. So you're not taking it all the way down to the full base because most beer mugs kind of have that chunk of glass at the bottom that's translucent. Um, but that is essentially that Z shape that we're going for here. And the good news is, I'm sure you guys are buzzed <laughs> like I am, but there's really no such thing as a mistake in an abstract painting because anything like here, we can cover that up with a bit of blue and some shadowing later, which we're already going to do anyway by design so once you get that nice Z shape in here then you're going to complete kind of just this triangle portion right there along the left side of the mug <clears throat> and this right here is our nice geometric shape that we are going on so once again it's that Z shape and then you fill in the side of the beer here and that is essentially a triangle and the Z so we're going to go ahead and clean off the brush now. <clears throat> and then once it's all nice and clean, we're going to go ahead and go in with this yellow color that came in your paws. I'm not going to blend it with anything. I'm just going to leave it that nice, bright yellow color. So you're going to grab some of that onto your brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the mug that is not currently within that Z pattern. So like so. We just fill in that inner triangle. And then we start to kind of fill in this background here within the rest of the mug shape. When I'm inside this beer mug, I'm doing vertical, that up and down motion. You don't necessarily have to do the side by side for the background because this is all about to be blended in a rather short amount of time. Okay, so once you go ahead and do that, we're going to go ahead and start to work in this orange color, this dark kind of rust orange that we made with the yellow. So we're going to go ahead and start to just kind of 
blend it in there and make it look less stand out without grabbing any more color from your palette. You're just gonna work with what you already have here so you can already kind of see how that's blending into it. And you see how you have the lighter portion here surrounded by that darker outline as well. So just kind of work in those harsh lines. And I'm using more of those up and down strokes, but you can use whatever method you like, if you like side by side. But I find up and down kind of helps to highlight this beard the most. So now that we have those two colors already working inside of the beer here, you can still see kind of that geometric, really obvious Z shape. It's slightly more blended than it initially was. So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight this beer even more with a bit of a lighter color yellow. So in order to make that lighter yellow, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a few poles of this yellow here. And then I'm just going to take a dab of white and I'm going to blend those two together. And we're going for a really, really nice light yellow here. I want even more white going on, so I'm gonna grab a bit more. We're looking for that pale pastel yellow in order to give that beer a bit more dimension than it already had. Okay, so now once we have that lighter color yellow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go in a smaller triangle shape here to try to highlight just some of the brighter areas inside of that beer mug. And I'm gonna take it inside here as well, kind of where we had before. So we had that darker, rusty orange color here, and then we filled it in with that brighter yellow straight out of the pod, no blending, and then we added this pastel yellow for that highlight, and that's what's going in over here as well. And then you're just gonna kinda wanna blend that light yellow into the beer shape. Once again, you're just blending and working those colors in so it's not quite so stark and really highlighting that light color of the beard. Looking good. <clears throat> okay. We'll take a break. Funny how it tends to change Like life has got some greater plan No holy water shots of the flame Like a spinning wheel will never see the end Begins to change 
So once you're satisfied with how blended in the beer is so far, you're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break um, and what you're going to do is you're going to wash off your brush. We're going to abandon that yellow color for now and really make sure it's clean because the next color we're grabbing is going to be white. So I'm going to dab off onto my paper towel here. I'm still pulling a bit of yellow so I'm going to do one more swim into the water or Coors Light if you're using a domestic. And make sure that brush is really, really clean. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that bright white. And then I'm going to just kind of highlight those pieces of the beer. And this part is kind of where it's fun. This is more up to your actual discretion as to where you want to add those highlights in. But for me, I'm focusing more on the left side here as well as on the right side. Basically where we filled in that really lighter bright pastel white. We're just going to highlight even more centrally inside of that part of the painting. Some sheens of light coming down that way. 
This part's completely up to you how much you want to accent within the beer. You get a bit more creativity here. Okay, awesome. And now we are basically finished with that central part of the inside golden color of our beer. So I think that deserves another beer break. Oh, hi. I'm Brian with Julian Hard Cider. Julian is a town uh, about an hour and 15 minutes outside of San Diego. Uh, into the mountains. It's a mountain town. We get all four seasons. Uh, we are known for, as an agricultural town. We have uh, apple orchards. We're famous for our pies. And we also have uh, also known for Julian Hard Cider. So our tasting room is up there. We have 13 currently on tap. If you're ever in San Diego and on a little cool day trip, uh, come on up and visit us. Uh, Julian's known for camping, uh, hiking, beautiful hiking trails, again apple picking, and um, right now we have had a lot of people coming up there and just doing, you know, a day trip to just get out. It's a nice place to just visit to, you know, get some sunshine. It's mostly always, you know, pretty sunny most of the year. Um, we do get snow in the winter time um, occasionally, so we get a lot of traffic coming up there for the snow, and um, just a great place to visit. Um, and just, you know, if you want to get out of uh, your house and make a cool little day trip, come on up. Um, today we are, we, are, we are introducing our first can release, which is called Freaky Tiki. It's hard cider blended with pineapple and lime. It uh, first was introduced as laid back pineapple a few years back, and that was a hard cider blended with just pineapple. But we needed something a little bit more to give it a little bit of a tartness, um, a little bit of a pop at the end. So we added key lime juice. So it's a fresh pressed cider. So it's, that means we're not using apple concentrate. Uh, we're pressing the apples and then fermenting and then blending with real pineapple juice and key lime juice, um, which is awesome flavor. It's uh, still at 6% alcohol, so it's not uh, overwhelming, but it's not you know a light, we'd say a light beer. Or, uh, anything like that. Right now, today, you're hopefully you're enjoy. You're gonna like this. You know, serve it nice cold. It actually blends well with some of our other flavors, such as apple pie. We have an apple pie hard cider, uh, blending both together. You can make a pineapple pie. Uh, so hopefully, it's out in Southern California, our apple pie is available. So if you want to get both, you can blend them together and make a pineapple pie. Um, we do have a lot of different creations at our tasting room where we blend all of our different ciders for a different effect, almost like a cider cocktail. Um, and that's about it, you know, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying your painting today. I, I uh, finished mine, I think it came out pretty good. You know, just a little mug there for going. And so, all right, let's do the tasting. Uh, I brought my friend Laura up here to help out and try a little hard cider, our Freaky Tiki Pineapple. There you are. Give a good crack. Cheers. Cheers. Take a little sip. It's good. good. Mm -hmm. so you taste it off the bat. Was the fresh pineapple, the little tartness of the lime. Mm -hmm. um, not overwhelming. You can imagine if you are just sitting there on the beach or, or at home. <laughs> it's not overpowering. I thought yep. this would be super pineapple-y or limey, but it's, it's a good blend. It's subtle. Thank you. Yeah, I like definitely. it. It's good. Yeah, good one. It's, uh, how about you? Cameraman, you want a little sip? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> you like <my> ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cheers. All right, so I've got to admit, I'm kind of falling behind a bit. 
Um, got a bit jealous that the cameraman was even drinking the Freaky Tiki, so I'm really excited to try this one. And I feel like it's a well-deserved break, too. Ooh, that's good. And you know, I've gotta be honest, I wasn't sure if this is a part of the can design, and then I just realized it's actually me just being messy with my paint, so, um, yeah. I guess that's all part of the fun. But anyway, we're ready for our next step, which is to fill in the top foam part that we've got at the very tippy top of the beer mug. So make sure you clean off that brush. And now we're gonna grab that white again. And I told you we'd be using this bigger brush the majority of the time, so we're still with the blue brush. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill in the white here. We're doing that same Nike swoosh kind of motion that we were doing along the background of the painting. And we're just gonna fill it in. Because you want this space to be pretty textured. It's supposed to be kind of like frothy, bubbly foam. You're just going to go ahead and fill that in across the dome of your beer mug, however much you decided to utilize there in that nice circular motion. This is also your chance to correct any of that background space that you might have accidentally filled into your foam area. That looks good. So now what we're gonna do, now that the canvas is entirely covered up in the background there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some drips that we have over here on this main example portrait. So you can do two drips, you can do one drip, it's really up to you, or if you wanna add no drips, that's fine too. But what I'm gonna do is kind of two nice driblets down that beer, make it look really, really appealing to the eye. And they can go as far down the mug as you like, or as shallow. But yeah, I think that looks pretty delectable. I might make it a little bit bigger, actually. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to kind of blend this white. We're going to take two holes of this white onto your palette. And we're gonna add the faintest little dabble of the blue color. And we're gonna stir those together. So the color that we're making right here, and I'll kind of tilt this so you can see it a bit better. The color we're making here is for the actual glassware. It's this light, light faint hint of blue. And this is gonna be used for the base of the mug as well as that handle area. So once you're happy with the color you've got, I'll show you up close a little bit, mine's that really, it almost looks like a gray, but it's got that hint of blue in it, so it looks a bit more authentic to glassware. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in and fill in this bottom portion, as well as that handle, so um, go ahead and get that done right now.
Okay, now that we've filled in that light bluish gray color here for the glassware of the base and the handle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and utilize the same color that we have. And this is, this is optional as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this to add a bit more dimension here. I'm adding it onto the table as a bit of like a reflection from the glass. So if you like the way that your table is, you don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna go ahead and do some backwards motions here kind of like a pyramid or reverse pyramid here. I'm gonna bring that down into the base. Kind of add some shimmer to the table there. Okay, and now we're done with that lighter grayish blue color. But this is another optional part as well. If you really wanna get fancy and creative and you're not feeling too, too buzzed yet, which I can't say that's the case for me, but we're gonna grab a smidgen more if you have some left and we can add some little Nike swooshes in the bubbles to kind of give that a little bit more texture as well. And you wanna be really faint with these nothing too crazy but it just gives those bubbles a bit more texture and dimension to them and then I'm gonna go in with a bit more white as well just kind of add some more of those swooshes on top there to really give that a nice pretty effect very subtle but I think it looks pretty cool Awesome. All right, guys, I've abandoned my blue brush inside of the water cup for now. We are completely done using that, which is great, but the even more better news that we've got going on, or more better, the best news, I guess, is we have one more beer left to drink. So without further ado, here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Cameron from Mother Earth. We were founded in 2010 in Vista, California, North County, San Diego. We also have a facility out in Nampa, Idaho, just outside of Boise. We've been brewing beer for 10 years. <laughs> been brewing beer for 10 years. We have year-round stuff, we have specialty stuff, we produce all the time. We can be found all over the country. 18 states, 14 countries. It's been a wild ride. I'm gonna drink a beer now. Syntax is one of our faves. We make it year round. It's an imperial peanut butter stout. Goes great with ice cream or quaffed. We put peanut butter, <laughs> we put peanut butter in the beer because it seemed like a good idea. And we were already making Cali cream in which had vanilla in it. So it only seemed logical that we'd make a beer to mix with Cali, which is now called Cali Tax. I suggest you try it. All right, we're gonna play some truth or beer. This is my buddy, Mike. I'm Cameron. You know the rules of the game. I ask him a question, he asks me a question. Either we answer truth or we got a drink. Let's do it. Truth or dare? Would truth you... or drink? Truth or drink. Thank you. Would you tell me in advance if the company was going to lay me off? <laughs> All right. Mike, on a scale of one to 10, how good of a boss am I? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go truth on this one. I'm gonna say you're 8.5. Yes, oh. you know what? I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst thing a coworker has said about me? Only because not a lot, I'm gonna drink on this one. <laughs> I'll take it these coworkers be talking smack then. I really wanted to hear that one. <laughs> All right, so be honest. What do you think of our beer? Well, I'm gonna go truth easily on that. But one of the best beers out in San Diego, hands down. And I, I feel like that comes across as being biased and a little bit of a homer, but yeah, I was a customer, first and foremost, 10 years ago when we first started. 
and got hired five years ago. So really, I've been around for 10 years. I mean, I can't say any other breweries that I've been drinking that long. So yeah, truthfully, one of the best around. Cheers to that. All right, tiebreaker bonus. Have you ever lied to get out of work to go to a party? <laughs> this food got caught. Hey everybody, thanks a lot. We've got a surprise for you guys now. Give yourselves a chance to win a hat and a gator mask. I want you guys to go to Rockstar's page, go down to the bottom and comment what your favorite Mother Earth beer is and tag someone who you like to drink it with. Thanks a lot. All right, I'm really excited to try this one. This is from Mother Earth. One of the first beers that I really fell in love with in the craft scene was Cali Creamin, so I'm excited to try Syntax. Delicious. I also really like that Cali Creamsicle one too that we did a few videos back. I thought that one was really, really cool. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're grabbing this black detail brush, and this is the final step of the painting. Um, and there's one other little bonus thing you can do, but this is really the last crucial step. So you wanna get that black, fine detailed brush wet and ready to go. And now what we're gonna do is we're essentially going to be outlining the exact shape of the beer mug to give it a lot of definition here and really create that abstract look. This isn't trying to be perfect. It's not trying to be uh, you know, realistic, realism piece. Um, it's supposed to be fun and exciting. So we're gonna grab some of that black color. And I'm gonna start down here at the base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this outline and really define the space between the background, the glassware, and the table. So you're just gonna to wanna to kind of follow along like that. And you can use one connected motion, you can use several motions. It's really up to you how you wanna outline that and then how dark you wanna make it as well. So I'm outlining this bottom piece here. And I'm kind of curving it because you know it's a technically a sphere, circle shape. And I'm gonna outline right up against where the beer hits the glass line as well. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it'll get blended in a little bit as well. So that's looking good. I'm gonna go down this side here. And then we're gonna do one more in the middle for kind of some dimension that we're gonna add inside that glass. And now we're gonna go along the left side and the right side of both the beer sides here. So there is our left side, now we're going up onto the right side, all the way up the beer mug. trace that handle portion as well. Really define that from the background. There's our inside C shape that we got. And now here's the part we have to be a little bit more steady with your hand. We're gonna outline the bottom of the bubbles here and the rim at the top. You want to kind of follow along that natural pattern that you gave the bubbles. And a little bit of black goes a long way, so you can really get that done in one stroke. But essentially, that is what we're looking at here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of accents inside the handle. Give it some more dimension. And that is essentially our piece. If you want to outline the background of the table a bit more, you can do that too. So what I would recommend now is to go back, and this is completely optional, but if you want to grab that blue brush for one final time, just keep it semi-damp. And then I recommend just kind of patting over that black and softening up some of those lines so they seem a bit more blended and a bit more straight and a bit more purposeful. 
So once again, I don't have any paint on this. I'm just, I just dipped it in a bit of water and I'm outlining the shapes that I did to kind of give it some of that dimension there. Really just blending those colors around. And now essentially your painting is finished. There's a few other things that you can do if you, you know, if you want to add a shadow in so the the mug is not sitting directly on the background, super easy. All you do is you grab some of that blue, go right along the side here, make it a bit darker and kind of blend it in. Completely optional steps, you don't have to do that. You can do it inside this mug here as well to kind of give it some more depth to that background. But yeah, essentially guys, that's your piece for today. If you'd like, once it completely dries, you can feel free to sign the bottom of it or leave it on the easel next to your favorite craft beer fridge and just let your friends awe over your beer collection and your stash that you have as well as your art. But thanks guys for participating. This has been really fun hanging out with you guys today and drinking six craft beers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed painting the piece entitled Love of My Life. We'll see you guys in the next one. What's up guys? Thank you so much for participating in the virtual beer and paint night or paint and beer night. It's been a few years. Um, if you guys liked the art today and you want to showcase it on your own personal Instagram page, tag Rockstar Beer. That's at Rockstar Beer. And we're going to go ahead and pick some of our favorites from tonight and uh, mail some goodies your way. Thanks for participating, guys.